What's up everybody? Welcome to episode 6 of the EVE Online tips and tutorials and gameplay and whatnot. Um, I was also thinking that once we sort of get into a little bit of combat, going through the tutorial by itself can be a little boring. I'll throw in a video or two of me playing on one of my other characters. Uh, I don't know if you see this ship flying by in the background there, but that's the ship that I've got that I've been running missions on with him. Um, so you can see kind of what you're what you're looking forward to and what what you can build to. But for the time being, we're just going to run out and see what this uh, this pirate den is that they want us to go and explore. And uh, we'll go from there. So I'm going to close the fitting tool that we opened up previously. And uh, we'll close the inventory. She wants us to undock. And that's this button here. Now, eh, she won't let me move that. But let's undock and see, see where this leads. Now, before we undock, actually, and you can click that to cancel it. There are a number of station services that you should be aware of. Um, most importantly, never fly a ship that isn't insured. So we will, okay, this ship is free, so you can't insure it. But in general, when you buy a ship, before you fly it, always insure it. It'll cost you like, it could be as much as about a third of the cost of the ship, but you'll get 80 to 90% of the ship's value uh, back if it gets blown up or when it gets blown up because it's pretty inevitable that it will. So there's a bunch of things to note over here. Factional warfare, which I think we're going to get into on this character because I've never done that before on my other characters and, you know, might as well, right? Uh, industry, which you can see here, and it also lines up with what you've got going on over there. Uh, the fitting tool. These are all services for this station. Now, you'll note that this has a repair shop. Uh, which is good because it's new bland, but <clears throat> some stations don't have a repair shop. So you may be out doing missions or running down DED sites that you've scanned down, uh, killing anomalies or pirates or whatever, um, and you'll land at a station thinking that you can just repair yourself and get a move on, but it won't have necessarily a repair shop, which is, which means you got to go then find a, a station in a system that, that does have one. So. Be aware that, that sometimes these things are lacking. This has a reprocessing plant, which allows you to turn ore that you've mined and turn it into minerals, which is good. It's got a poor conversion rate, but we'll get into that in a bit. It's got the market, which allows us to obviously buy and sell, and a clone bay. We won't get into clone bays right now, but uh, but just, just realize that there are a lot of different options that you can get into and parts of the station that you can use that may or may not be at other stations. So we'll undock and we'll just take our little Corvette out. Pretty nice, we got some guns on the top and the bottom there. It's not symmetric, but still pretty I good I have calculated ship. the location of the nearest pirate outpost. You should now click on the location marker icon in the info panel. In the info panel. Where is the Active. info panel? Not do that. Okay, so by left clicking on this, it warps us to the location. This tutorial is pretty new, at least as far as I was concerned. So there's my ship. I zoomed in. You can see the Galente icon on the top of it there. Um, but anyway, some things have changed. This this whole walkthrough at the beginning is new, and if we zoom way out, you can see this red. Captain, Target there. I had calculated your combat odds to be within an acceptable level of safety. However, I did not anticipate the presence of corrosive gases in this area. If you get caught in a gas cloud, your ship will start taking damage. All right. In that case, you should use your afterburn. I'm going to go through this damaged cloud. Remember uh, to activate your repair module when you possible. take damage and switch it off and again. And so if you look, you we're going to pass through this. And it will damage us as we go and we get to this thing. Now, we could fly over here and avoid it. But it would deprive us of a learning opportunity to learn about the nuances of armor repair versus shield repair. So, while we fly through this, this little icon here is us. As we enter it, you'll see that we start taking damage. Um, if I tried to target this guy... It'll tell us that our max targeting range is 24 kilometers. And that's, oh, there goes our shield. So before we get into the armor, 
I'm going to hit this armor thing, this armor repair, because it actually doesn't repair Captain, there your armor until it does a full cycle. Shield boosters, things that effectively repair Remember your, your shields, approach. do Look. the re repair Orbit. on Shoot. right when you click it. That It's like at the beginning of the cycle as opposed to the end. So for armor repairs, you need to pretty much approach, lock, Yep, orbit, shoot, got it. So you need to be aware that this delay happens. So as we get closer to this clone jacker punk, um, starting to hurt here, but uh, to determine what range I should orbit at or keep at to be most optimal in as far as the damage that I do and the ability to hit, I'll hover over my weapon like we talked about last time and see that the optimal range is 5200 and the fall off is 73. The rule of thumb I've heard is <clears throat> take your optimal range and add a third of the fall off range for your orbit. So a third of 7300 is like 2400. So 24 plus 52 is about 7K. So we'll orbit at 7500 or thereabouts. There we go. And we turn on the gun. Now, to see our orbit, once we hit orbit, you see this blue ring that pops up around this guy? That's the path that we're going to be taking. And you can see us here and our trajectory by the, by the arrow. And it looks like we've got a couple more. So I'm going to approach the thing that we just, uh, that we just killed here. And I'm going to loot it before I get into... Uh, taking on these other two bad boys here. Now, you can see that they're getting closer. And the smaller ships will approach you much faster than, than the larger ones, just because they're more capable of, well, those higher speeds. So they'll approach you. We'll close that to get it out of our way. And just for aesthetics... I'll zoom in so that we can see ourselves. And you can see our shields are slowly regenerating. So whatever it was that told us that our shield regeneration rate was zero hit points per second, that was wrong. So that's a good, <clears throat> a good reminder that not everything is an exact science here. Okay, we're under 24. Uh, so I'm gonna target both of these. Looks like they have rockets. And I will just start my Start my gun. Now this gun, because it's a, a civilian rail gun, it doesn't do, it doesn't use ammo, so I don't need to worry about running out of ammo or having an empty clip or uh, reloading or any of that. So it's nice, but it's a very weak, weak weapon. So if you can replace any of your modules with actual modules instead of the civilian grade modules, there it's gonna be a big upgrade. Civilian stuff is terrible. It's the worst that you can get pretty much. So anytime you can replace an item that is a civilian module, you should do so. Um, and you'll probably see a drastic improvement. And we're gonna loot those wrecks as well. And so like we said previously, in order to loot stuff, you're gonna to have to get within 2,500 meters uh, to do so. And so the fact that they've got, the enemy has these little red flashing brackets around it means that they have me targeted. If they're yellow, it means they're trying to target me. So, <clears throat> let's see, we'll go and get that out of the way just so that we can, not that seeing what is going on is gonna do anything for us, but you can see us getting closer. Um, and what we're doing here, we get a few metal scraps and we'll approach them and so each of these has a 10,000 credit bounty so killing them will give us that bounty now you may notice that if I look at my wallet I don't have any bounties in here from the first three guys that I've killed so far it only accumulates bounties and distributes them on a 20 minute basis and those are called ticks so if you if you hear people referring to their tick rate when running missions it's how much money they're making in a 20 minute window. So our tick rate is gonna be ridiculously small because we're in the smallest ship possible with the weakest guns 
in the middle of the tutorial. So don't don't be disheartened by by what your actual tick rate is. But you know the term now, and so you can sort of pay attention to it. So randomly, as you're flying around, <clears throat> if you uh, if you see your wallet flash, which you will hear shortly, um, and you see a, a number come up of that's green, that's money that you've made, that's uh, that's what's happening. Is you're you're you've reached the end of your 20-minute window, and you're being paid for all the bounties that you earned in that period of time. Mission rewards, on the other hand, you get immediately. So when you hand in a mission or you complete a mission, and we'll see some of those here shortly. Um, it just pays you out immediately. So we've got more. Great job, Captain. I yep, have highlighted I, the container I'm, uh, you need to approach. pretty with myself as well. You should loot its contents and I then return to station. So other items uh, like this resource crate will appear here, and they won't be an actual ship, but they will have. It's just like a cargo container that's hovering out in space that you need to go and pick up. Um, if a car, if a container that you see or a ship, uh, a wreck of a ship that looks like it has loot in it is yellow on your, on your little heads up display over here, your overview, if it ever looks yellow, it's not yours. It's like trying, if like, if you're in another MMO and somebody else kills something, if you go, the most MMOs or most games don't allow you to do this, but Eve does. Um, it's like going over to somebody else's kill and looting it even though you didn't have anything to do with killing it. The caveat with Eve is that if you do that, it makes you a suspect and appear yellow as well. And it sort of flags you in a certain way so that for, I think it's 15 minutes, whoever's cargo container that was, or whoever's wreck that you looted that wasn't yours, can then come and kill you without the police or the Concord being real upset. And that's in high security space. Um, high security space, the security status of the system you're in is, is located up here in the upper left, and that's, uh, the highest is 1.0, and the lowest is like negative one, but uh, it's considered low sec, or low security space, um, at 0 0.4 or below. A system will have generally a, a point value that's 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 4, all the way up to 1, uh, 1.0. <clears throat> And from 0.5 to 1.0, on you can get killed by the cops by attacking somebody that HQ. is just just random. Um, all right, so it says to dock back at HQ. So one way to do it, because this is a tutorial, it'll have this little icon for you to click at there. Another way to do that is to see the square station here that you just came from and know that that's your HQ. Um, and then to right click on it and select dock. So we'll just do what she's asking because I don't want her to be upset with me. Active. And there we go, we're aligning. You'll see our warp get to three quarter speed and boom, and then we go, there we go. And we're off. So, <clears throat> so yeah, so security, the security of the space is, is important to note and it'll warn you before you go into 0 0.4 or below. Once you're in 0 0.4, or below, people can attack you randomly throughout space, and Concord won't show up. Um, if you're in low sec space, which is 0 0.1 to 1, uh, 0.4, there are cannons that are around gates that will still attack you if you shoot somebody or requested. take an aggressive action that was unwarranted. Um, but elsewhere in space, you'll be fine. At 0, 0.0 or below. That's the way you deal with pirate scum, recruit. Yeah. I'm impressed by your I diligence. I took care of that pilot scum. Not yep, only did you, you eliminate them all, but you all... Um, but you should once you get to 0, 0.0 or below, there the aren't even gate guns to find that I'm aware civilian of. Data so you just need to be very careful in what space you're in. And uh, that was it for this, this little mission. We're going to get into... It looks like she wants to introduce us to uh, the market. So I'll save that for the next time, but this was just a quick, again, jaunt into combat, and what you saw was kind of the first glimpse of what running a mission is like. Usually they'll tell you, hey, uh, there's a damsel that's in distress. Yes, I know. It's a trope that exists even here. Um, 
And we need you to go and rescue her. She's at Kroll's station, and we've given you the location. And so you then fly out there using an, uh, a location over here on the left or within the conversation window that you open with your agent. And, uh, and you fly on out there. You kill the things that are there. You do the objective, which would, in that case would be saving the damsel or, you know, uh, picking up hostages or janitors or whatever the case may be. Uh, and then you bring them back to whatever the destination is. So it's some of it's courier, some of it's, you know, go and kill five waves of whatever. Um, but what you just saw was like a pretty quick snapshot into it. And the, I guess one of the next videos will be me on one of my other characters doing an actual level four mission. And I'll talk you through kind of what I think about and what my considerations are for when I go into it. So um, hopefully that'll help and give you something to look forward to. But thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. And if you enjoy this or if you have any questions, by all means, let me know. Um, if you think that uh, I guess I could improve in some way that would meet your needs better, please leave a comment in the, in the comment section below. It, because I'm relatively new to all this, it's not the cesspool that, that comment sections on YouTube often can be. And uh, I'll provide a response and we'll maybe even make a video for you. So if you have any questions, let me know. And until then, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.